from Seco Future Farm. Today's innovations, tomorrow's solutions. Hello and welcome back to the Future Farm. Here we are standing over the Future Farm and as you can see, it is making some really nice rapid progress. We've built our foundation with some really nice emergence products and products at planting. And now as we're building the scaffolding to build that yield up, we're looking at what we can do to provide the resources necessary to give the best yield possible to the crop. So I have Adam Dickinson here with us today, and we are going to be talking about foliar nutritionals. So Adam, welcome. Thank you, Jim. Glad to be here. Excellent. So Adam, we've, as I mentioned, we're building the scaffolding, and that plant has to have all the resources necessary to maximize yield. And so what can we do if we start to identify some uh, deficiencies in nutrients that we might be observing throughout the season? Yeah, Jim, so it's an excellent op opportunity for us to use a foliar uh, application to provide uh, nutrients to the crop uh, where deficiencies may be showing, uh, mm -hmm. and that can be done either aerial, um, with a ground machine, or even fertigation in some cases. Excellent. Yeah, you know, crop access is so difficult this time of year as we start to get beyond the point where we can knife in extra nutrients, and we may actually, I mean, we're actually applying it to the leaf surface, right? And so can we get it into the plant through the leaf? Yeah, actually this is an excellent opportunity to get it in rapidly and, and directly where we need it. So some nutrients are mobile and they'll be able to translocate through the plant. Others are immobile, which will sit there and uh, be absorbed right into the leaf at that point mm -hmm. and that, utilized. That's really good to know. So yeah, you know, we can address these things as we see them coming on. And you know, we're looking at a couple of different nutrients that we might want to supplement in the crop today. So can you tell us a little bit about what are those nutrients? Yeah, so there's a couple. Uh, one key one that we've noticed a lot of this year is sulfur deficiency, mm -hmm. right? As we know that that's uh, been a, a nutrient that's been uh, showing more deficiencies over time. And uh, so we, we have a product that's got a high load of sulfur that we're able to apply, again, foliar, right? Mm -hmm. and throughout various times of the year, from early season to later season. And, you know, we see a little bit even here today, just uh, on this leaf here that we were able to find. Yeah, and so sulfur deficiency typically shows up as a little bit of the striping between the uh, the veins of the uh, leaf that you can see, you know, some yellowing in between. And it tell us, is that what we're looking for for sulfur deficiency? Correct, yeah, and that's what you can see here today a little bit is just that inner, inner vein yellowing, mm -hmm. so. And uh, so, you know, sulfur is one thing we can address uh, nicely with these foliar applications. Are there any other nutrients that we might be looking at, macro or micro? Yeah, another one that we've we've uh, dealt a lot with is potassium mm -hmm. at this late season around that VT to early reproductive stages on corn in particular, but also on soybeans, mm -hmm. right, and other crops for that matter. But uh, so we've got a product that's got a high load of potassium as as uh, crops really utilize a lot of potassium at that time of year. Um, it also has some sulfur in that product as well. So uh, that's great. And then obviously there's there's nutrient not nutrient but nitrogen loads that we're looking at supplementing as well. Because during this rapid growth period that we're in right now, you know there's a lot of nitrogen being pulled in from the soil. And depending on soil type and fertility of the soil, we may not be completely able to supplement what that plant needs. Right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of nutrients in these. Right. A lot of them do have a nitrogen. It's it's a quick way to get a spike of nitrogen into the leaf. It's it's rapidly uptaken through the leaf, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't have to worry about it getting into the soil and, and uptake through the roots. Also, it, it helps to create chlorophyll and uh, provide a green up of that plant to help keep that factory cranking at a high level. Exactly, and so what are we looking for out of, out of these nutritionals? I mean, yield is obviously the major component of what we're after, right? Oh, absolutely, right, yield is what pays the bills. So always is uh, first and foremost is our ROI, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's certain developments at certain times of the year, right? So whether it be root and shoot development early, or uh, grain fill with, uh, with uh, some of these later products and helping make sure that we've got all the nutrients to maximize uh, that genetic potential. Yeah, so I, I wanna come back to a, a comment you made right there about ROI, but before I do that, you know, you'd mentioned different stages in the crop's life, but when can we do these foliar nutritionals if, you know, in the crop? Is that something that we should only do at, here at V13, V14? You know, we can start, I'd say, anytime after uh, V4, V5, mm -hmm. once the plant has enough leaf tissue to uh, be able to absorb what we're putting out, right? Mm -hmm. But really from there on throughout uh, those early reproductive stages is a good time to make that application to get the, the nutrients needed and to maybe solve or correct a problem that may be happening in the immediate future. Oh, that's excellent. And yeah, I can picture in different parts of the country, you know, it, in the West, we have limited water situations where you may not want to invest as much fertility up front 
but may decide to do so later as we see what the water situation looks like with the rains. And then elsewhere in the U.S. where you have you know, plenty of water, uh, you, know, you just want to supplement maybe denitrification or other nutrient deficiencies as you, as you observe them. C correct, yeah. We're seeing uh, as, as this technology develops and the use of it uh, spreads, a lot of unique opportunities. And one is in some of our uh, more arid environments in the West mm -hmm. of guys spreading out that nutritional need into the crop season to make sure that they're able to utilize it. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to your ROI uh, comment, you know, obviously yield is what pays the bills. And is there anything we can look at with combining these applications with any sort of other application on the crop? And so we only have to fly it on once or, or something like that. How compatible are these products? Yeah, mo there, there's varying arrays of compatibility. You know, we always look for stuff that's extremely compatible, right? Mm -hmm. That's that is the best way to increase your ROI is not to have to pay for that extra pass. Mm -hmm. So we, we look to add a lot of these to a post herbicide pass mm -hmm. in that early vegetative stages. And then again, in a late vegetative, early reproductive stage, uh, in a maybe a fungi, right along with a fungicide application. Um, they can be made throughout the year, obviously. Right. But uh, to, to maximize the benefit and, and the highest ROI of, of your application equipment. Oh, that's, that's excellent. As you mentioned, I mean, when you can apply it with herbicide or fungicide, or even in some cases, you might be able to combine it with an insecticide application Correct. should you need to address something there. I mean, that makes the ROI so much easier to pay for. It should almost ride along with any application you make, right? Correct, yeah. We, we, we like to get, have a ride along option for both of those passes. You mm -hmm. know, we have an opportunity in that early season pass, and then we have one again in that late season to address the needs that the plant is going to need at that time or may that we feel may arise in the near future. Mm -hmm. um, but again, you can always add a pass if you've got a, a deficiency that comes up throughout the growing season. Oh, that's really good to know. So Adam, anything else you want to add about these foliar nutritionals before we wrap up? I think it's just important to understand what's in the mix and to make sure that you've got the, the nutrients in there to solve the issue or to address what, uh, what the plant needs are uh, as that plant progresses throughout its growing stages. Excellent. Well, thank you, Adam, for joining us today. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it.